Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Ray and this is where I share my inner monologue with you guys about basically pet food that you asked me to do. I am a small animal general practitioner. I am not a nutritionist, but I am a veterinarian um, and I have a degree in small animal um, biology or actually, no, mm -mm. I have a degree in animal science biology. <laughs> So anyway, veterinarian, animal scientist, and um, yeah, I answer your questions that you guys ask me. So feel free to, you know, join us, come and hang out with us. I hope you, if you are new, that you will stick around. Um, one of my subscribers asked me to review a very long time ago, and I'm very sorry that I'm just getting to this now, First Mate um, Pet Food. Um, they are a Canadian company, and, and it says here on their websites that they are proudly made in Canada since 1989. Um, they did not specifically mention which food to do, so I just picked one. I picked the cage-free duck and oat formula, and so that is what we're going to review today. Um, I emailed the company, and I got the information that we need to do a proper review. We're going to be using our pet food scoring system, um, scoring system that I totally made up, but at least all the videos will be, uh, you know, you have something to look back and compare to. I'm not just making it up. I'm trying to keep it unbiased and honest. And so that's why I, you know, developed this system and to also keep me from deviating too much to, you know, extra stuff. So uh, today we're going to do first mate. I picked this one. So we're going to start with the front of the package. Now, right on the front, it says grain friendly. I'm really happy about that. I want to stay away from the grain free. I want your pet to have a happy and healthy heart for a long time. And you can check the community tab. Um, if you want some information about the issues with grain free, if you're not familiar with it, um, please educate yourself on that. And I also have a video on grain free as well that you can check out and I'll link it up here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, um, you know, we're going to be happy about that. The cage free duck meal and oat formula, um, the front of the package, I mean, it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot there. Um, it says on the front right here, which I'm not particularly happy about, and we'll get more into it in the AFCO statement, that it is an all life stage formula. And so what that means is this particular food is not for your Pacific your pet specific life stage. Um, it's meant for all life stages, which means it, meet, it needs to meet the minimum for the most rigorous growing life stage, and that is puppy pregnant and lactating. And so we are, you know, you guys most likely have found this channel searching for a you know, specific food. Um, you wanna do something, you know, great for your pet. And so you want something tailored to your pet and all life stage is not going to be that. Now, it doesn't mean that these foods cannot be good. It just means the company has not put that extra energy into it to make it specifically for your pet they've just kind of lumped things together and um, you know I don't know about you but for me um, if I'm going through all this work you know I want I want something tailored to my pet and so you know all life stages a little bit a little bit they mark it as a good thing but it's not really a good thing and you can see that they put it right there on the front of the package um, okay let us see if we can find um, some information here uh, cage free duck and oat uses duck from France <laughs> as the single meat protein and only two wholesome grains. And so um, what they're saying is, and we'll look into it, that, you know, duck is the, they're, they're promoting this kind of as a limited ingredient diet, which is fine. Um, but, you know, in order to use this as a food trial diet, we need to make sure of the processing and to make sure this is not getting mixed in with other diets. And unless they really have rigorous processing, there's no way to know. And that's why prescription diets are really the only appropriate diets for food trials, because in order to be a prescription, um, there are regulations on how it's processed. If it's not a prescription, there are no regulations and you really just have to like trust the company. So, you know, I don't know if you guys trust this, you know, what your trust level is, but, um, you know, that's kind of the deal with that. Okay, and say, say right here, the chicken fat used in First Mate Pet Foods is processed free of protein, eliminating the risk of allergens derived from chicken. Um, so what they're saying is, yeah, it's duck, but then down here they're already saying, ah, uh, but we use chicken fat. Um, so, you, you know, you can kind of see, you, you can kind of see what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here. Um, okay, grain free, potato, grain, and pea free. That goes back to the um, concern with the, you know, the grain free. Those peas and potatoes, those are something we're working through as causing some issues with heart disease. So they're saying they don't include that, which is, which is a good thing. Um, complete production control. 
So that, you know, that'd be an interesting thing. I mean, if you're in Canada um, and you get an opportunity to either tour the facility or, um, you know, have some inside knowledge about that, or, you know, if by chance First Mate, you know, someone that works at First Mate is watching this video, that would be awesome. You can leave me a comment down below. below. Tell me about this processing. I'd like to know. Um, veterinarian formulated and family owned. Okay. Here we go right into the APCO statement. First mate, um, duck meal and oat formula is formulated, so they don't get a point there. It's not feeding child. To meet the nutrient guidelines established by AFCO for all life stages, except the growth of large um, sized dogs. So basically this is a um, puppy formula, um, but not a large breed puppy formula. So although you can feed it to adults, should you feed it to adults? That's the question. Um, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get into the guaranteed analysis and we're gonna find out. And so they actually get no points, no points for the AFCO statement. Um, ingredient list. So um, they are going to get two points here before we jump into it because it's not grain free and it's not raw. But we're just going to kind of peruse here for a second. We're not going to spend a lot of time here because this is very heavily manipulated and it's not providing us most likely with the information that's really going to sway us either which way. Now if we get two foods that are exactly the same that we're considering we might dive into this a little bit further. But for the purpose of this video we're not going to do that. We're just going to just take a quick little glance and break you know break down some pretty obvious things. So duck meal is the first, you know, the first ingredient. And then you can see as you get down here, you've got the chicken fat. So it is not a purely duck diet. It has chicken fat in it. Um, and so um, usually if we're picking a diet for a food trial, if a pet is allergic to chicken, we, we most often assume it's allergic to all po poultry. And so it's not that big of a deal, but you can see that um, there is something else in here, a different protein in here other than duck. There is also chicken. So that's kind of how the ingredient, you know, the ingredient list works. Um, kind of neat. You can click on the ingredient to see its description. So if there's any of these ingredients that you um, are curious about, you can go ahead and click on it and get more information there. All right. Guaranteed analysis. Now. See if I can position this appropriately. Um, the guaranteed analysis here, as you can see, is minimum and maximums. We do not want that. We want exacts. We want to know exactly what's in there. We don't want this ambiguity that occurs with the minimums and maximums. So I have emailed the company and I got the information. That's what we're going to use for this review. Um, we do need to make sure the metabolizable energy is close to 4,000 or below, that it's not overly nutrient dense, and we need to take that into consideration. And this one is not. It's 3160, which is fine. All right, let's pull up the information um, that they sent me. This is the mineral content here. It also has a little bit of the vitamins, and then I had to do it in two separate. We also have the protein, fat, and fiber um, on a different on a different little screen capture. So side by side. So the protein for an adult dog, this comes from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. There's a link down below where you can um, look at the textbook online for free. So feel free to do that. There's also a link in the Amazon storefront um, where you can purchase it if you really want to purchase it. But um, the, the online version is there for you and, and there's there's no cost associated. So protein should be between 15 and 30 and we're at 28. So we're perfect. Fat at 13 percent. And it should be between 10 and 20, so that's good. Fiber, 7.8. It's a little bit of high in fiber. Usually fiber should be less than 5, so that's interesting um, that they chose to, um, you know, put the fiber a little bit higher. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, we've reviewed some other diets that are higher in fiber that are great diets. So of all the parameters that you could be off, I am okay with the fiber, but I can't give them the point for it because I made up the system and, you know, my rules. So if I don't follow them, who will? All right, let's get into the minerals. Oh boy, and here's where we went into some problems. Um, calcium at 2% is way too much calcium. Phosphorus at 1.3%, way too much, uh, you know, way too much phosphorus there. And so when you get into the minerals being high, that that is where I get a little bit, ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> that is where I get a little bit concerned because excess minerals is super bad for your pet's kidneys. Um, and this is, this is quite superfluous here. So, um, you know, if you have a senior pet, you have a pet that's prone to stones, maybe you have a breed that's prone to snow stones, like the schnauzer or something like that. Um, this excess minerals is going to be a problem for you. And I, you know, I, I can't in good faith, um, recommend that. They're not going to get those points there. So they're going to lose actually three points on the guaranteed analysis. They're only going to get two points there. Um, let's just for funsies go through some of these other ones because they did provide it. Um, sodium at 4% or excuse me, 0.4% um, and that's fine. 
uh, let's see, chloride, 0.7%. Um, it's a little bit excessive on chloride. Let's see where the vitamins stack up. Vitamin E, 68. That's super wimpy, super, super wimpy. They just put that vitamin in, vitamin E in there as a token because 68 is not even close to what we need. We need above 400. Um, they didn't list the vitamin C. Okay. So only going to get two points there. Um, let's go to the feeding guide, and then we can wrap this up with our, our final evaluation here. Um, feeding guide is right here. All right, regular diets. This is interesting. So the, the feeding guide, it's every single one of their diets. I've never had, yeah, okay, interesting. All their diets fall into this into this category. Um, so for a 10 to 20 pound dog, and we're gonna go to the high of this range because we already know that the 20 pound dog resting energy requirement is 366. And how do we know that? If you know, you know, we always calculate it in this channel for the 20 pound dog just for simplicity's sake, and it's 366. I will post a chart here and you can use the chart or you can use the actual calculation to calculate your dog's exact, exact resting energy requirement. But just for illustration purposes, we're gonna use 20 pounds and it's 366. If you use the multiplier of 1.6, then it is going to be around 580. And so they're saying, um, very interesting, a senior is going to be on this side, a less active this side, adult puppy, you see, because it's all life stages. So it's, it's just, it's not neat. I don't like that. Um, it's just messy. Uh, so let's see, 20 pound dog, we're going to say less, you know, less active. Um, so that would be the 366. They get a half a cup. Um, so let's see what, where is the actual calories per cup, half a cup, 490 calories per cup, 490 divided by two is 245. That's, that's not enough. So they need 366. So they're not going to get a point for the feeding guide. It's actually low, which is really odd because usually it's the other way around. It's high, but it, nonetheless, they, they don't get the point there. So let's add up the points. Uh, doesn't seem like it's going to be too good on this one. Eh. All right. So we got, um, okay. So AFCO statement was zero points because it was formulated and it was all life stages. It was no points on the feeding guide. It was um, two points on the ingredient list, two points on the AFCO, or excuse me, two points on the guaranteed analysis. So we got four points there. Um, am I missing anything? Why do I never bring, why do I never bring my pen and paper? I don't know why I do this to myself. Why do I do this to myself over and over again? Okay. Ten points. Uh. Okay. I will learn my lesson. I will learn my lesson. One day. One day. All right. Let's just write this. Guaranteed analysis. Maybe I should make a scorecard. I should make a scorecard. I'm savvy. I can make a scorecard. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on a scorecard. I'm going to work on a scorecard. And you know what? I'm going to post that scorecard and then we can play along like bingo. We can, we can, we can have our scorecard. That's, mm, mm hmm. Ingredient list, feeding guide. Back to what I was saying. Two on the guaranteed analysis, two on the ingredient list, zero on the feeding guide, Zero on the AFCO statement. That's four. <sighs> four out of ten. Um, so four to ten, you can use that number to go back and um, you know review some of the other foods, see how they stack up. Now this is just uh, you know this is just a breakdown. It does not mean that if you're feeding this you know food to your pet, you should stop. Um, it may stimulate some conversation with your veterinarian, um, and that's great. I love to stimulate conversation. Um, I'm not telling you to change your food. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you guys what to do at all. I am just giving you the information and allowing you guys to make your decision. So. If that is interesting to you and you do enjoy that, please like and subscribe. Join me again. We will do it again. I promise. Because I'm fixing to film another video right now. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later.